I want to talk today uh, a little bit about mountaintop removal mining uh, because I know that that's an area where you have some experience in litigation um, and in uh, work in teaching and writing. Um, I'm wondering for the students um, if you could just talk a little bit about the practice and how and when the practice became popular and why it is that it became popular. Well, it, it really began uh, on a small scale in southern West Virginia in the late uh, 1980s. Uh, it was a practice that wasn't widely recognized uh, in across the country as a as a means to uh, mine coal. Uh, and one of the reasons for that was that it was conducted in areas that are very remote. Uh, the topography is uh, very steep slopes, uh, narrow ridge tops, uh, uh, valley bottoms that are a few hundred feet wide with streams running uh, through them, and, and, and all of those located 40 or 50 miles away from m any major population centers. Uh, and. Uh, so, even though I had been working with um, issues relating to the environmental impacts of coal mining for, at that, at that point, 20 years, I wasn't really familiar with the technique. Uh, it involves uh, basically the, the extraction of coal from uh, coal seams which lie horizontally uh, under the ground uh, and it enables the, the uh, coal operator to remove multiple seams whereas historically uh, whether it was strip mining or underground mining there would be one principal seam that would be mined so it allows for the maximization uh, of uh, removal of the, of the resource uh, but it uh, uh, it has a very high cost, and the, the concept of multiple seam strip mining uh, w w originally uh, came from uh, a recognition of the ability to move massive amounts of uh, overburden, we call it, the, the rock and soil overlying coal seam that was utilized uh, in the Great Plains region in Montana and Wyoming where the coal seams there were from 30 to 50 to 90 feet thick and uh, it was uh, cost effective for coal companies uh, to use giant uh, shovels so to speak uh, earth moving equipment uh, uh, that could take one bite with their scoops that would carry a, a Greyhound bus uh, it, and they had to remove the overburden and then dig down into that coal and it was the economy of scale uh, and so in Montana and Wyoming and Utah uh, uh, coal companies were using that methodology and uh, some of the industry believed that it was transferable to, to the eastern Central Appalachian coal fields, and they started to try that um, technique in the latter uh, part of the 1980s, uh, and um, it is cost effective, uh, and it's not labor intensive. So mountaintop removal has played a major role in the reduction of the coal mining workforce in Central Appalachia. Uh, uh, coal miners. Uh, of the past, we ordinarily think of coal miners as wearing hard hats with lights on them and their faces all uh, dirty and their clothes are covered with coal dust. Well, that's not the mountaintop removal miner. Uh, those who work on mountaintop removal mines uh, uh, operate large equipment. The drag line is the, is the, the, the name that is used with regard to the, the, the biggest equipment, but they also 
uh, drive rock trucks, which are uh, enormous trucks that wouldn't you wouldn't see on the highway, with tires that are 10 feet high, and uh, they they carry tons and tons of uh, coal or uh, overburden. Uh, miners uh, on mountaintop removal mines uh, conduct blasting. They use an enormous amount of uh, explosives to uh, blow apart the the overburden, the rock overlying the coal seams. Uh, the uh, the amount of explosives used in one uh, one sequence of, of blasting or move overburden is the equivalent of the explosives that that uh, was used to, by the terrorists to bring down the Oklahoma City Federal Building. Um, and uh, after the topsoil, there's not much of it in mountain ridges in central Appalachia. After that's removed, uh, the rock is blasted apart. That's removed uh, and disposed of in, in what are called valley fills. And then uh, the, the drag line uh, removes the coal. Uh, it's uh, placed in rock trucks or in conveyor belts and uh, taken to coal preparation plants. Um, and the area is enormous uh, that's impacted. Uh, and and uh, interestingly enough, uh, uh, it's equivalent, if you can think about this, as uh, maybe a, uh, a cake, and the icing is the coal. And this is a multiple uh, layer cake, so to speak, where uh, the, the rock is removed. The icing uh, it, between the layers is uh, uh, is extracted, and they go to the next layer. In some places, in in southern West Virginia, there are sixteen to eighteen seams, wow. many of which would not be commercially mineable using conventional methods. They may be two or three feet high, uh, but using mountaintop removal, uh, it's cost effective to to go uh, deep and remove uh, even the thin seams of coal. Wow. But it's all driven by uh, the need to use this enormous equipment. Uh, and so there, mining companies require uh, a huge capital outlay. Uh, the smaller coal companies that used to operate in central Appalachia have been decimated. There aren't very many left because they can't compete. Uh, w with the bigger companies that are able to use, uh, use uh, this expensive equipment uh, and produce uh, a big mountaintop removal operation might produce three to five or six million tons a year.